everybody, it's Miss Karen, Young Adult Librarian at the Goshen Public Library, back with some brand new books to share with you. I have two new boxes of books to show you. Now they're not big boxes, but um, I think they'll still have some really good books in them. So let's check out what we got this time. Open. First book in our first box is called... A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. And um, as you can see, it looks, uh, it looks like they're underwater. I'm thinking maybe a little bit of a mermaid vibe, so it could be fantasy. Let's see. In a society determined to keep her under lock and key, Tavia must hide her siren powers. Meanwhile, Effie is fighting her own family struggles as she is pitted against the literal demons from her past. Together, these best friends must navigate the perils of high school's junior year. But everything changes in the aftermath of a siren murder, murder trial that rocks the nation when Tavia accidentally lets out her magical voice at the worst possible moment. Soon, nothing in Portland, Oregon seems safe. To save themselves from drowning, Tavia and Effie's unbreakable sisterhood must prove to be the strongest magic of all. So this is um, fantasy, but it's set in current present day um, mermaids about friendship and um, self-discovery and all those kinds of things so if you like fantasy but you like it with a modern twist check out a song below water by bethany morrow next up we have my eyes are up here by laura zimmerman this one looks like realistic fiction so let's see if Greer Walsh could only live inside her head, life would be easier. She'd be able to focus on excelling at math or negotiating peace talks between her best friend and everyone else. She wouldn't spend any time at all worrying about being the only Kennedy High School student whose breasts are bigger than her head. But you can't play volleyball inside your head or go to the pool or have confusing date-like encounters with the charming new boy. You need an actual body for all of those things, and Greer is entirely uncomfortable in hers. Hilarious and heartbreakingly honest, My Eyes Are Up Here is a story of awkwardness, ferocity, of imaginary butterflies, and rock-solid friends. It's the story of a girl finding her way out of her oversized sweatshirt and back into the real world. So definitely realistic fiction. Um, it's about friendship, coming of age, um, finding confidence, and being comfortable in your own skin. So if this sounds like it speaks to you, check out My Eyes Are Up Here by Laura Zimmerman. And next up we have The Girl in the White Van by April Henry. This looks like suspense to me. Mystery maybe, and it is kind of thin, so it'll probably be a quick read. Let's see. When Savannah disappears soon after arguing with her mom's boyfriend, everyone assumes she's run away. The truth is much worse. She's been kidnapped by a man in a white van who locks her in an old trailer home, far from prying eyes. And worse yet, Savannah's not alone. Ten months earlier, Jenny met the same fate and nearly died attempting to escape. Now as the two girls wonder if the kidnapper will kill them or hold them captive forever, they must join forces to break out, even if it means they die trying. So definitely suspense, definitely mystery. Um, so if you like edge of your seat and you want something quick, check out The Girl in the White Van by April Henry. Next up is The Wish Granter by CJ Redwine. This is part of the Ravenspire series. Now, Ravenspire is not a series that you have to read in any particular order. They are all fairy tale retellings set in the same fantasy world. So Ravenspire is the world. Um, you don't have to read them in order, like I said. Um, they're all retellings of different fairy tales. So The Wish Granter is the Rumpelstiltskin retelling. It says, The world has turned upside down for Tad and Ari Glavin, the bastard twins of Sundrail's king. Their mother was murdered, the royal family died mysteriously, and now Tad sits on the throne of a kingdom whose streets are overrun with violence he can't stop. Growing up ignored by the nobility, Ari never wanted to be a proper princess. And when Tad suddenly starts training Ari to take his place, she realizes that her brother's ascension to the throne wasn't fate. It was the work of a wish-granter named Alastair Teague, who tricked, who tricked Tad into wishing away his soul in exchange for the crown. 
So Ari recruits the help of Tad's enigmatic new weapons master, Sebastian, to teach her how to fight Teague. With secret ties to Teague's criminal empire, Sebastian might just hold the key to discovering Alistair's weaknesses, saving Ari's brother and herself. But Teague is ruthless, and now he has his sights set on the princess. And if Ari can't outwit him, she'll lose Sebastian, her brother, and her soul. Okay, so this is The Wish Granter. Um, the other books in the Ravenspire uh, series are The Shadow Queen, um, The Blood Spell, and The Traitor Prince. So they're all available in our collection. If you want any of them or all of them, you can put them on hold in the catalog. All right, and last out of this box is called The Loop by Ben Oliver, which looks to me like science fiction, maybe a little dystopian. Um, definitely got some adventure action in there, so let's see. Luca Kane has spent 736 days wrongfully imprisoned inside the loop awaiting his execution. Each day is the same, each day is torturous, but things are starting to change. Whispers of war are circulating, strange things are happening to the prisoners, and the warden delivers a message. Luca, you have to get out. Now Luca must decide whether breaking out of the loop is his only way to survive especially if there's any chance of saving the ones he loves. But the population on the outside may be far more terrifying than anything he could have imagined. And in order to save his family, he'll have to discover who is responsible for the chaos that has been inflicted upon the world. Okay, so this is definitely um, dystopian, science fiction, sort of... Um, this kind of sounds like the Maze Runner, so if you liked that, you might like this one too. Um, check out The Loop by Ben Oliver. All right, so let's move this box out of the way and see what we've got in our next box. All right, first book in our next box is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. Uh, looks like contemporary fiction, uh, realistic fiction. Looks like... Uh, might have some humor in it. She looks very happy. So let's see. Liz Lighty has always believed she's too black, too poor, too awkward to shine in her small, rich, prom-obsessed Midwestern town. But it's okay. Liz has a plan that will get her out of Campbell, Indiana forever. Attend the uber-elite Pennington College, play in their world-famous orchestra, and become a doctor. But when the financial aid she was counting on unexpectedly falls through, Liz's plans come crashing down until she's reminded of her school's scholarship for prom king and queen. There's nothing Liz wants to do less than endure a gauntlet of social media trolls, catty competitors, and humiliating public events. But despite her devastating fear of the spotlight, she's willing to do whatever it takes to get to Pennington. The only thing that makes it halfway bearable is the new girl in school, Mac. She's smart, funny, and just as much of an outsider as Liz. But Mac is also in the running for queen. Will falling for the competition keep Liz from her dreams or make them come true? So if you're looking for some uh, fun contemporary fiction, realistic fiction, um, you should see me in a crown. Looks like it has everything you're looking for. It sounds like it's fun, a um, little bit of romance, and um, finding confidence in yourself. So check that one out. Let's see what's next. Next we have A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne Brown. That. All right. This definitely looks uh, fantasy. So let's see. For Malik, the Solstasia Festival is a chance to escape his war-stricken home and start a new life with his sisters in the prosperous desert city of Zaran. But when a vengeful spirit abducts Malik's younger sister, Nadia, as payment to enter the city, Malik strikes a fatal deal. Kill Karina, crown princess of Zaran, in exchange for Nadia's freedom. But Karina has deadly aspirations of her own. Her mother, the Sultana, has been assassinated. Her court threatens mutiny, and Solstasia looms like a knife over her neck. 
Grief-stricken, Karina decides to resurrect her mother through ancient magic, requiring the beating heart of a king, and she knows just how to obtain one by offering her hand in marriage to the victor of the Solstasia competition. When Malik rigs his way into the contest, he and Karina are set on a heart-pounding course to destroy each other. But as attraction flares between them and ancient evils stir, will they be able to see their tasks to the death? So this is definitely um, epic fantasy. Um, it sounds really exciting. Um, kind of like the Children of Blood and Bone a little bit, maybe. Um, but definitely sounds like, uh, check it out if you like that kind of fantasy, adventure, um, intrigue, that sort of thing. What's next? Next we have This Is My America by Kim Johnson. This looks like realistic fiction. Uh, let's see. Every week, 17-year-old Tracy Beaumont writes letters to Innocence X, asking the organization to help her father, an innocent black man on death row. After seven years, Tracy is running out of time. Her dad has 275 days left. Then one night changes everything. The police arrive, pounding on the door, and Tracy's older brother, Jamal, goes from being a bright, promising track star to a thug on the run, accused of killing a white girl. Determined to save her brother, Tracy investigates what really happened between Jamal and Angela down at the pike. And as Tracy discovers the racist history that haunts her small town's present, she begins to wonder whether she's lighting the torch that will illuminate her family's innocence or lighting the fuse that will cause her world to explode. Kim Johnson's gripping debut is a revelation, an incendiary, crucial look at the American justice system Delivered as an uplifting read full of love, conquering hate, and of justice delivered in the face of injustice. So this is definitely um, realistic. It's very current. Uh, and it um, sounds like it has a little mystery in it. Um, we have to solve that to figure out uh, who's innocent and who isn't. So check out This Is My America by Kim Johnson. Right. And last but not least, the last book I'm going to show you, I know that some of you have been waiting for, Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer, which is the latest book in the Twilight um, series. Uh, this is the retelling from Edward's point of view. So if you've been waiting for it, we have it. You can put it on hold. Um, if you haven't read Twilight yet and you're interested in reading it, you can read this one um, as well. Uh, let's see. When Edward Cullen and Bella Swan met in Twilight, an iconic love story was born. But until now, fans have heard only Bella's side of the story. At last, readers can experience Edward's version in the long-awaited companion novel Midnight Sun. This unforgettable tale, as told through Edward's eyes, takes on a new and decidedly dark twist. Meeting Bella is both the most unnerving and intriguing event he has experienced in all his years as a vampire. As we learn more fascinating details about Edward's past and the complexity of his inner thoughts, we understand why this is the defining struggle of his life. How can he justify following his heart if it means leading Bella into danger? In Midnight Sun, Stephanie Meyer transports us back to a world that has captivated millions of readers and brings us an epic novel about the profound pleasures and devastating consequences of immortal love. So if you were a Twilight fan, and you want to reread the story from Edward's point of view, Midnight Sun is the book you have definitely been waiting for. So you can put it on hold in the catalog anytime. You can put any of these books that I showed you on hold in the catalog anytime, or you can call us at the library and I will um, pull the books for you, or you can come in and visit us. We are open to the public Monday through Thursday from 10 to 1 or 4 to 7. Uh, and Friday and Saturday from 12 to 4. So you can come and grab these books off the shelf yourself. All right. I hope you found something you liked. And I will be back again soon with another box.